Hi everyone, um, my name is Gretchen. I'm a ranger here in Zion National Park with the Division of Interpretation. Thank you so much for joining me for our ranger guided walk today. Usually when we uh, do a ranger guided walk, we're outside enjoying the beautiful scenic wonders of Zion National Park. But today we're standing in a workroom that is adjacent to our museum collection storage behind me. And so today we're gonna take you through a walk in our museum collection storage area. Zion National Park is lucky to have a full-time staff of specialists and curators who help to preserve and protect and catalog um, specimens and artifacts and archives that tell the history of Zion National Park. Um, these items come from various fields of study like geology, paleontology, biology, archaeology, history, and ethnology. But today, as we walk through our museum collection storage, I am going to show you the thing that I think is most special about our collection, and that is the art that is housed behind this door. From the very first days of the very first national park, um, there's been a special relationship between our treasured public lands and artists. Thomas Moran painted landscapes that helped to inspire a nation to create the first national park, Yellowstone. And for Ansel Adams, Yosemite was his muse. Zion, like many other parks, has been the inspiration for art and artistry throughout the years. So we're gonna head into the museum collection now so that I can show you some of the work of art that is associated with Zion's history. We're going to be really careful as we walk into museum collection because this space is quite small and we need to make sure that our presence isn't doing anything to disturb or disrupt the collection, especially while we're in this area, which are the mobile art racks. And I'm usually a big gestury kind of ranger. I'm gonna kind of keep that to a dull roar right now as we move into the art. I'm gonna have you come closer and take a look over here at one of the first pieces of art that is associated with Zion National Park and probably one of the most famous. This is a painting titled Zion Canyon. It is oil on canvas. It's not a very large painting. Uh, the canvas itself is 37 centimeters tall by 70 centimeters wide. That's about 14 and a half inches by about 27 and a half inches. This was painted by Frederick Samuel Dellenbaugh in 1903, and it is a typical canyon scene of the park. In the uh, front and the foreground at ground level, you've got these beautiful green grasses and a couple of red boulders. In, in the midground, you've got stands of cottonwood trees. And um, in the background, you've got these beautiful red, pink, and cream colored cliffs that lift up into a blue sky dotted with a few white clouds. If you were to visit Zion National Park and um, walk about a mile and a half north of today's visitor center, you would see this exact view. Um, it's, it's likely that it was painted in early, late spring, early summer, given the green grasses and the blue uh, skies. Any later in the year and those grasses would be dried out and brown. Dellenbaugh um, painted this in 1903, but it was not his first visit to the canyon. In 1872, John Wesley Powell led an expedition on behalf of the U.S. Geological Survey, and Dellenbaugh, at 17 years of age, joined that ex expedition. Um, he was an artist and a cartographer. His job on that tour was to make maps of the area. Um, just a little bit over 30 years later, in 1903, he returned to Zion Canyon after having uh, studied in France. He studied painting while he was in France. And uh, his intention in that 1903 visit was to capture this amazing and marvelous landscape on canvas. A year later, Dellenbaugh wrote an article for a, a magazine known as Scribner's in which he um, detailed his experience in Zion. He titled that article, The New Valley of Wonders. And my favorite quote from that article, uh, Dellenbaugh writes, one hardly knows what to think of it. Never before has such a naked rock entered into our imagination. 
without a shred of disguise, its transcendent form rises preeminent. There's almost nothing to compare to it. Niagara has the beauty of power, Grand Canyon of immensity, the Yellowstone of singularity, Yosemite, altitude, and the ocean of power. This great temple, eternity. That article and the accompanying photographs helped to inspire a nation. And just a few years later, Mukuntuweep National Monument was born. The monument would change designations and names a couple of times until in 1919, the Congress of the United States made this area Zion National Park. Most of us believe it started with this painting right here. Now, Dellenbaugh wasn't the first artist to experience Zion or to capture the beauties of Zion on canvas, but it was his work that would lead the way for many more artists to follow. So we're gonna back up out of this section of racks right now so that I can move these racks very cautiously um, so we can get a look at another series of paintings. Well, one of the paintings from a series of paintings that helped to inspire people to visit Zion National Park. Um, the Union Pacific Railroad in 1926 was interested in um, promoting the scenery of the Colorado Plateau, and it goes without saying, tourism to the Colorado Plateau. And so if you'll come in here, you'll see one of the paintings that they commissioned in their, um, in their uh, plot, if you will, to get visitors to come out here. This is a painting by a man named Howard Butler Russell. Nope, Howard Russell Butler, that's one. When people have three names, it's just challenging. <laughs> Howard Russell Butler was a Princeton educated scientist. He studied painting under Frederick Church, and he actually founded the American Fine Arts Society. In 1926, he traveled west and he painted a series of paintings um, just uh, committing the glories of the Colorado Plateau to canvas. This is one of the seven paintings he painted of Zion. It is titled, titled Midnight in Zion Canyon. It's a big, it's a big canvas, um, 125 and a half centimeters tall, 150 centimeters wide. That puts it at just about four feet on each side, but not quite a perfect square. And it is a typical nighttime scene in Zion Canyon. Um, I'm gonna point out a few of my favorite details on this painting. If you look closely, below the center horizontal line and just a little bit to the right of the center horizontal line down here in this field of grasses is a buck. He's kind of standing sideways and looking over his shoulder at us right now. He's easiest to find if you look for his little white rump kind of glowing in the moonlight of the canyon. And my other thing about this painting that just delights me is up here in the left-hand corner in this midnight blue sky, Butler has painted a few dots of starlight for us. And these are actually the stars that make up the tail end of the constellation Cygnus, the swan, which I'll be honest is my favorite of the constellations. Um, because of the, the position of these stars over the canyon, and the fact that he titled this Midnight in Zion Canyon, he was probably painting this in late May or early June, depending upon, um, because of the position of those stars. Um, the, this is my favorite painting in our collection. Uh, it is one that I have a lot of um, affinity for because I really like Zion Canyon by night time. Um, our days are so hectic and, and hot and sometimes very, very loud. Visitors from all over the world come to Zion National Park to enjoy the hiking and the sightseeing and the ability to sit on the lodge lawn and eat ice cream cones. And I enjoy all of that too. But when the sun sets, our visitors have a tendency to leave the canyon and get tucked away for the evening. And then the canyon is full of solitude and starlight. And this painting, I think, does a really nice job of evoking that, that quietness that Zion Canyon nights are known for. There are actually over a hundred of pieces of artwork contained within our museum collection, um, but that is not the only art that this park owns. 
We have other art that is not part of our museum collection because it has come through uh, to us through a program known as the Artist in Residence Program. So we're going to back up out of these racks right now and I'm actually going to lead you out of museum collection storage and down the hall of our headquarters building so we can take a, a look at some of the pieces that have been gifted to us through the Artist in Residence program through the years. So come on this way. just making sure they're not we're not going to disturb anybody as we walk through these corridors this is um, one of the hallways of our headquarters building and I'm really loud and when I'm in headquarters I try to talk just a little bit more quietly so I don't disturb anybody many parks have an artist in residence program where they invite artists to come to the parks live in the parks and be inspired by what they experience Zion's Artist in Residence program started in 2010. Every year, we invite two or three or even sometimes four artists to live in Zion National Park for a month each in one of our historic cottages and interact with the park and park visitors. At the end of that time, they then gift the park a piece that was inspired by their experience. And we're going to look at two of those pieces today. The first one is somewhat familiar because it, it deals with a landscape. And the landscape, of course, is Zion National Park. Um, this is titled Sunset Ranch. It's by an artist named Suze Wolf. It is a watercolor on paper. And it is a really large panoramic piece. In the frame, this piece is th uh, 53 centimeters tall by 125. Uh, 152 excuse me centimeters wide that makes it about 20 and a half inches by about 60 -ish, inch ish inches and it has a lot in common with those first couple of paintings we looked at there are these green grasses in the foreground some red boulders in the midground and then those lead to the pink and white cliffs of Zion Canyon with which we are so familiar but this piece was actually painted from a slightly different vantage point there's an area of our park known as the Kolob Terrace, and Suze Wolf was up on the Kolob Terrace when she did the study that would become this painting. It, you, uh, it's as if we were looking east from the Kolob Terrace towards Zion Canyon. Um, Suze Wolf, in her artist summary of this piece, described this view as the backside view of the canyon peaks. And if you look, you can see the West Temple and the East Temple kind of standing tall and proud in the distance. Suze Wolf was here in September of 2012 when she created the study for this piece. This is actually a piece that she finished in her studio, but she did all of the study for it while she was here during her residency. Now this piece is very similar, like I said, to the Dellenbaugh and the Butler because it deals with the landscape of Zion. And it is, of course, the landscape of Zion that has brought this area so much notoriety, the grandeur and the immensity of this park. The next piece I'm going to show you is very, very different. This piece was created by the artist Leslie Nichols when she was here in the spring of 2015. It's titled Vicki Parkinson. Leslie Nichols does this very interesting artwork where she uses a typewriter to create portraits of people using their own words. A couple of years prior to uh, Leslie Nichols being here, Vicki Parkinson had interviewed her grandmother for a um, series uh, called Pioneer Voices. Vicki was the descendant of um, some of the earliest pioneers to this area, and she was also a long, long time park employee. And she and her grandmother talked and used words like loved the canyon, loved the park, this is home. And they talked about how this area was part of their family's history. And so Leslie Nichols used those words to type over and over and over again and create this portrait of Vicki in her park service uniform. Now I was lucky enough to work with Vicki for a couple of years before she retired, and I have to tell you, this is an incredible likeness of her. Not only does it look like her physically, but because of those words, loved the canyon, loved the park, it was home, 
it evokes Vicky's spirit as well. She truly believed that this was her home and uh, she loved this place with all her heart. Um, portraits like, I, I should say landscapes, like the butler and the Dellenbaugh and even this Sue's Wolf evoke the immensity and um, grandeur of Zion National Park and tell the story of this landscape. And that's a story that is worth telling over and over and over again. But sometimes we forget in the uh, light of all this beauty that there is a really personal story here, a story of the people who lived in this area and loved this area. And it's pieces like Vicki Parkinson that help to remind us of the history of this place and not just the grandeur of this place. I started this little talk today by saying that the parks and the public lands and the artists have always shared a special relationship. And it is inspiration that feeds and um, sustains that relationship. And though you might not consider yourself artists, I do not consider myself an artist in any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm sure that when you have visited Zion, you have been out in the park and you have felt the call and the pull of inspiration, the same inspiration that has, has um, forced these artists to create such beautiful works. Um, so even though you might never have one of your photographs or um, paintings um, on the walls of the, of the park headquarters building or stored safely in our collection storage area, if you've ever pulled out your camera, or more likely your cell phone, to take a picture and frame just the perfect shot of Zion, or if you've ever thought about what words you might use to describe this experience to your friends and your family, then you have participated in that same inspiration. And hopefully those words and those photographs that you will show your friends and family will inspire the next generation to come to the parks and to create um, based on that experience. So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, ranger-led tour today. And um, I can't thank you enough for participating with me. And I really hope that someday in the not too distant future, we'll be able to meet up here in Zion National Park and soak up some of the inspiration that she gives to all of us. In the meantime, stay home, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.